Welcome to the hopefully soon to be completed Barnuminium known as Alex Labs. I wanted to share my experience testing and data of a solar powered air conditioner. And this is no tiny swamp cooler or some inefficient Peltier thing. This is the real deal. It's a two ton mini split capable of cooling about a thousand square feet of living space on its own. And the best part, it runs entirely off of solar panels. It doesn't need batteries. It doesn't need an inverter. It doesn't even need AC power, just seven solar panels. But if you're grid tied, I do some simple math at the end of the video where I show that the unit pays for itself, including the panels in less than five years. But first, let's go test this thing. I'm building this 4,000 square foot Barnuminium in coastal Southern Texas, and I decided to take it off grid. Why off grid? Well, because the driveway is actually past where a street ends and the power company wanted $12,000 to run five poles and a transformer just to run power to the Barnuminium. After all, we do know that the Texas power grid is kind of the butt of jokes anyway. What's a not so young man to do? Well, the answer is easy, go solar. So I found a company called Signature Solar right here in Texas that sells all kinds of solar goodies. And when I was populating my cart with all kinds of solar goodies, I stumbled across something that really caught my attention, a solar air conditioner. This is no janky swamp cooler. This is no little thing. This is actually a two ton mini split that can supposedly run straight off of solar panels, doesn't need batteries, doesn't need an inverter to run. I figured, well, you know, since building a place in southern coastal Texas is akin to being cremated without any sort of AC, I wanted to take the edge off even though there was no power in the building yet. I decided to buy a unit, install it, and test it. And this is the data I gathered running it off solar panels. Before we get started, it's important to note that even though this is a 4,000 square foot Barnuminium, the walls are 18 feet high, rising to a peak of 25 feet, making the interior volume the equivalent of 8,000 square feet of living space. Nobody in their right minds would try to fully cool 8,000 square feet of living space with a two ton AC unit. But hey, this is a test. There's also another big strike against this thing, and that is these massive garage doors. The biggest one is 12 feet wide and 14 feet high, and my one concession to aesthetics was making those copper colored. The roof, as you'll note, is all white, but the copper colored doors absorb a lot of heat and radiate it. In fact, it's not uncommon for them to hit 115 degrees on the backside. These will eventually get insulation and brush seals and other things, but I figured if this thing does anything in this space, it's a win. And then I'll buy three more. What this isn't is an install video. I'm not an HVAC guy. I've never installed a mini split in my life. There are other tons of YouTube videos about how to install mini splits. This video is about how well does this thing actually work. So I installed it. I bought this bracket thing off of Amazon, which helped hold the interior part of the mini split while I ran the lines set through it and all that. And it was immensely helpful. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to get one yourself, if you're going to install these, particularly if you're going to install it by yourself and you don't have help. I was able to get this thing in in about four hours. But then I did get a little bit of help from a new friend named Dago. Did he say you? He's from Alabama, who once I prepped the solar panels with magnets just to stick them to the porch roof, helped me put the panels down, and then we hooked them up, and then it was time to throw the switch and see how well it worked. PV cables are not connected yet. We want to make sure nothing's going to shorten the box. Only one way to find out. Okay. Let's see if we get power. Let's see if it's the correct polarity. How can I prove to you that this is not going to run off the whip? Well, the whip, of course, being the 240 volt line. Because this is it. It's not connected. It doesn't matter. There's no power in the building anyway. This cable here is just simply the control cable. Now, if I got the polarity correct here, we should see, I don't know, like maybe 260 volts or so. Yep, how is that? Exactly, nope, sweat, it's hot. 260 volts. Release the hounds. We got power. Let's see if we have air conditioning. 
Oh dear God, we have air conditioning. Oh, that feels wonderful. 20 is 20 degrees Celsius, whatever that is. That's some kind of reasonable temp. That's like 68 degrees or something, which is good because right now it's 90.6 in here. And that is very, very hot. Oh, sweet, sweet AC. Oh, love you, air conditioning. Why is it tilting away from me? Don't do that. Come back. Pure solar power. Oh, that actually works. Let's go look at the outside unit. Now, I know this is not properly installed. This is experimental. We got wires hanging down. It's not bolted down. Those are just zip tied in place. But if you've ever tried to build a house when it's 95 degrees outside and there's no air conditioning, well, you can feel my pain. Close the doors. They're letting all the AC out. Go ahead, stand right under it. It's only been on for about 25 minutes. Because it's Celsius. I haven't changed it to Fahrenheit yet. But do you care right at this moment? <laughs> figured out how to put it in Fahrenheit mode. Just wanted to interject here real quick and tell you how to do it since it's not in the manual and I couldn't find it online. The instructions for converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit are on the back of the remote. You press the temp up and temp down buttons for three seconds while the AC is on and it'll switch from Celsius to Fahrenheit and vice versa. Just a little aside. Now back to the show. It's draining some water over there. There's a wasp. I want to know how much current this thing is drawn. Hey, get away from me. 10 amps. I don't have a safe way to measure the voltage, but the open circuit voltage was 260. So, probably running about 200 volts, maybe. What has been living here? It is noticeably cooler in here. Hovering around 88 degrees. Let's see what it is outside. It is 93.3. Come on, Raj. It's cooler in here. What do you think, Dago? You gonna get yourself one? I'm getting one. <laughs> So it's overcast right now, and it's still running, but I think the compressor slows down, so I want to do a quick current test, see what it's drawing now. Yeah, it's only pulling 3.4 amps, so apparently it speeds up and slows down to available power, which makes sense. That's what it's supposed to do. And Roger agrees. Sun's up high, Texas sky, cool breeze, flowing wide. Solar power on my side, beat the heat, I won't hide. Or just before 9 a.m. on day two, the sun is rising directly behind me. The porch with the panels is directly on the opposite side of the building, so you can tell by the shadows that the panels are likely to be in shadow. I want to see how much light they actually need to power the air conditioner. All right, the display is flashing LP, which means low power. 
My understanding is that's not enough power to power the compressor. So it will try three times 15 minutes apart. And the only way to clear it is to turn it off and then back on. But the green light indicates when there's enough power to run the compressor, I believe. So I assume that it does not have enough power to run the compressor. We'll find out. Anyway, so the compressor is not running yet, but we're going to take a current measurement. The panels are still in partial shade. Now it's bouncing up and down between 250 and 400 milliamps. You need to go outside. I do not want you to die. Don't bounce off it. Gotcha. Look, it's a template for the AC. You will live. Assuming the dog doesn't find you. Good right, buddy. You're free. Come on. Off you get. Go ahead. One save. It is 89.4 degrees in here and without air movement, that is hot. Let's try turning it on. See if the, the PV kicks on. That means it's trying to start the compressor. Is there enough light? Let's see if it stays on. Oh, it's staying on. Lovely, lovely air conditioning. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's right before 10.30 a.m. and we have enough light for AC. And again, it's 89.4 in here. Let's see if it's running at full tilt. We know full tilt is like 10 amps. Let's see what we got. We're at 4 amps. So 4 amps is like the minimum for the compressor to run, I guess. The green light is still on, so that's what we need to get AC. Once again, 89.4 is our starting temperature, and it's just before 10.30. Let's see what happens. Well, it's 91.7 degrees out here in the shade with a cool breeze, but let's go check the inside. But well, let's do a fun little thing and put this poor girl out in the sun, and we'll come back and see where that ends up. It's noticeably cooler over here. It's 86.7 degrees. The PV light is on. You can clearly tell it's compressing. Look at all that water. Drawing nine amps. The compressor has kicked up. I really should insulate this stuff, make it more efficient. But again, science. So this is the minimal amount of light the panels need for the compressor to run. So we have about a five degree delta from inside to outside right now, at least in the shade. But remember, what's giving us shade is this big giant building. Let's see what the building is actually experiencing. See what our girl is doing. 114 in the sun and rising. Now oh, it'll probably get up to 120 but that's brutal. Get it around there. You should be by the air conditioner, buddy. It's hot. For such a massively undersized unit, again, there will be six tons of AC in here overall instead of just two. We're holding steady at 86.9 in here. So it's more like 6 p.m. now. We still have intermittent clouds which isn't good. Well, let's see how she's doing. Well, it doesn't feel quite as brutal in here. AC is still running and so is the compressor. You can tell by the green light and it's holding at 86.3 degrees. Feels quite nice here.
91. It appears that the two-ton unit is enough to keep temperatures steady. Like wherever it is, that's where it's gonna stay. We have a delta of about five degrees. It's not bad. So it's right around 6.30 and the compressor has just kicked off. Now, it's a little overcast outside. There may be a few clouds blocking things, but check this out. Sun is coming out and the compressor is kicking back on. Yeah, that's super cool. Now I know this is gonna be running low power. It's got to. Sun is really coming out now. It's about 2.5 amps. So it's running on low power, but it is cycling exactly how it's supposed to. I think that's really cool. I did several more days of testing, but the data was largely consistent. And besides which, I'm sure you're tired of looking at foggy potato cameras. But to sum up, the lowest compressor current that I saw was just under 2 amps, and maximum compressor current coming from the solar panels was right around 10 amps. Even though I mentioned many times that this two-ton unit is massively undersized for a building of this size, it was still able to keep a consistent difference in temperature of five to seven degrees with a high of 10 degrees between inside and outside. That's really impressive stuff. About a week after these tests, I decided to install the battery banks and the inverter so I could have some temporary power in the building so I could run the Wi-Fi and be able to use the app that comes with the air conditioner. And you can watch it change as clouds go over or there's a less sunny day or a more sunny day. In short, this thing is, there's no other word for it, it's awesome. Okay, so now that we know it works, let's talk about cost. Obviously, in my case, going off grid and all that, this thing has the benefit of not drawing from the main solar array during the day. But what about for those of you looking to save money on your energy bills? Let's look at some simple math. As of the date of me shooting this video, this two-ton AC unit from Signature Solar costs $18.99, or about what a decent normal mini split costs. The one-ton unit is $1,350. Now they do sell a kit that includes the panels for about $3,200 for the two-ton unit, and it's about $2,000 for the one-ton unit. They do run some good sales from time to time, and in fact, I told them I was making a video about this thing, and they gave me a discount code, which you can find in the description below. But let's assume you buy the two-ton kit at full price for $3,200. According to the EIA, that's the Energy Information Agency, once again, at this very moment in time, the average price of electricity in the U.S. per kilowatt hour is 16.43 cents, and that's only going to go up. If you were to run this at full power, 2000 watts, all day long without solar assistance, and keep in mind these units are highly efficient, they're in the 21 to 22 SEER range, you'd rack up 17,520 kilowatt hours a year. At 16.43 cents per kilowatt hours, that's $2,878 per year. Now, on an average sunny day, you can expect at least eight hours of solar running. And let's say you have 250 sunny days a year. That would save you paying for 4,000 kilowatt hours per year, or 657 bucks. Which means this setup, solar panels and all, would pay for itself in less than five years. And you can expect a life expectancy of at least twice that, if not more. So over a 10 year period, not only are the unit and panels essentially free, but they will have saved you an additional $3,200 over the minimum expected life expectancy of the unit. This really is a no brainer. On top of that, you'd still have AC during the day if your power goes out. And again, check out the link in the description below to save even more. Now, I know I sound like a sales guy. I'm not. I actually bought this unit from them. But after thoroughly testing this thing, I find it really, really awesome. And having never installed a mini split before, this thing just worked from jump. I didn't edit anything out. There was no troubleshooting, nothing. It just worked. So thanks for coming along on this ride and watching, and I will see you all on the next one. You ready? Yes, you're ready. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Hit the stick. Let's go. Bring it back. <laughs>